Hey everybody, Joe from Great Bench Electronics here. Welcome, welcome back. So if you are a watcher of the channel, then you know that I like germanium transistors. I like germanium fuzzes. I like building with them. I like collecting them. I just think, you know, it's an old, interesting technology and it's fun to play with germanium transistors. And in accordance with that, I've made a bunch of videos on germaniums and this is gonna be another one of those videos. And in this specifically, I'm gonna talk about buying germanium transistors. As a collector and a user, I've had my fair share of successes and failures over many purchases of germaniums. And so I just wanted to impart the knowledge that I've gained buying and selling these specific components so that maybe if someone else out there is interested, then you can learn a bit. Uh, there's generally three ways of buying germanium transistors. The first way is probably the most uh, straightforward, which is buying a match set from a place like Small Bear, Small Bear Electronics. Uh, I would recommend this for anyone who is just building one or two specific germanium fuzzes, like fuzz face, tone bender, range master, etc. If you just want to build one or two pedals and you're not going all in on germanium, then this is probably the way to go because you don't have to deal with any of the matching or testing. Small Bear will back up the sets, so if you get a bad set for whatever reason, you can send it back and, and they'll, they'll make it right. The downside, of course, is that you're going to pay a premium for all the labor that goes into doing all that work for you, matching and selecting transistors. So you can see here, they have sets for the tone benders. These expensive ones are $40 a set, so that's $13 a transistor. Some of the cheaper ones are like 32. I know they have one set that's like 29, I think. Yeah, for the generic fuzz face set, it's 29, so that's $15 a transistor. Range Master, $17 for the single transistor. So um, you, you don't have to deal, you don't have to worry about testing or pairing. You don't have to worry about getting duds, but you're gonna pay a premium. You're gonna pay 13, 15, $17 a transistor if you get them in a match set. The second option is to get individual transistors from some electronic seller. Small Bear also sells individual transistors. You can see them here. Obviously, significantly discounted compared to the transistors that come in the kits. These are four bucks, three bucks, seven bucks for some fancier manufacturer ones. Cheaper, of course, you're gonna save some money, but number one, you're not gonna have uh, testing for HFE, so you're not necessarily gonna get the gains that you want or need. You're not gonna have testing for excessive amounts of leakage. You're not gonna have auditing, so they're not gonna listen to transistors and make sure that they're not excessively noisy. As far as what Small Bear will do to compensate you for any of those problems, I'm not sure, uh, but you are paying less for transistors, so you're saving money, but you are, it's a bit more risky. You can also go to other websites, like here's NTE Parts Direct. NTE is an electronic distributor, and this is the way to order from them directly. And they have, you know, like a, a famous part number here, 2N404. They allegedly have 60 of them, um, but they're selling them for 455, so five, six bucks a piece after shipping. I generally don't recommend this method to anyone because I don't think it's worth it. You you have all the risk of buying just random germanium transistors at a higher price. I would generally say if you're gonna spend this amount of money buying germanium transistors, you're gonna to have to buy enough of them to make sure you get the gains that you want, that you're gonna end up spending the same amount of money as just picking up a match set that's already picked out for you. So in my opinion, I generally don't recommend going this route. The nice part is you do get new parts. So as long as they have a return policy, you theoretically could send them back if they have some problem. There's a bit of buyer beware there. The third option, of course, is picking up germanium transistor lots off a place like eBay. So this is eBay. This is a germanium uh, lot that I picked up for this video. Uh, so we're gonna look at these transistors in a second, but I just wanna so show the listing. So this was marketed as a vintage estate lot of GE transistors. 2N169 and others rare. One thing you'll learn looking at germanium transistors is all germanium transistors are rare according to the listing titles. There are no unrare or common germanium transistors. No one will ever market that. So you can kind of forget that part. So by the picture, it looks to be approximately, uh, I would say 60 or 70 transistors here. And we can see in the pictures, the part numbers, I do see 2N169 GE. Uh, so in this case, it's a little bit confusing. GE in this case stands for General Electric, but obviously it also can be GE, the uh, elements in germanium. So that's one slightly confusing thing. In this case, it's capital G, capital E, which is General Electric. So we see 2N169s. I also see 2N44s there. It looks like there's a handful of different packages as well. There's some of the round top hat style with the crimp, and there's also some of the oval style. One thing that stuck out to me after now that I've bought a bunch of these lots is that the leads here, you can see the leads are trimmed, which 
would qualify these as used transistors. However, the leads are not particularly bent. So if you look at like this transistor here, these ones here, these ones here, the leads are pretty much sticking out straight the way they are oriented in the actual transistor itself. They're not significantly bent up. Like this one's a little bit bent here, but that could just be from bouncing around in a bag. The leads are not misshapen though. Uh, and what that says to me is that they likely were socketed in something. You know, obviously looking at this, the question you have to ask is, why are all of these transistors here? We can see that they're trimmed. They're probably used in something. Why keep them? Why not? If they're bad, why not just throw them away? It was listed as an estate sale, which could have been some old radio person who kept them on hand or just was a hoarder and didn't want to throw stuff out. Anyway, like I said, I bought this lot and this being the third option, you're going to pay the cheapest amount per transistor. I would say in this case, you should hope to pay less than a dollar transistor. That's, that's usually my goal. If I'm looking at a lot like this and I want to buy, if I'm not getting the transistors for less than a dollar, I feel like I'm paying too much money, especially in a lot like this where they're marketed as untested or four parts not working. I don't have any recourse. This lot, we could unpack this box and it could be 100% duds or 100% low gain, high leakage crap. And that's the risk you take when you buy lots like this is you never know what you're getting and you very likely don't have any way to get your money back. So um, I don't mind disclosing, I think I paid $65 for this lot, free shipping. So that would put me, if there is, it's right about a dollar transistor for these and you're gonna pay a premium for anything American made, so General Electric, Sylvania, Raytheon, Texas Instruments. There's gonna be a premium there, especially these older ones. I do end up paying around that $1 mark, 75 cents to a dollar mark. Um, I wanted to pick these up for the video. I don't buy too many lots these days just because I have a lot of transistors right now, but, but yeah, anyway, so I picked up this lot and we're gonna come over to the bench and we're gonna have a look and see what we got. Hopefully we have some good quality transistors in there uh, and we'll look at testing some and hopefully after that, we will build something cool out of it. So if that sounds interesting, stick around. Got the transistors here, all the way from Wisconsin. So, we're gonna find out whether or not I lost 65 bucks. Like I said, this is the way it goes. You never know what you're gonna get. Could be all fantastic transistors, in which case I saved a bunch of money by not picking out those prepared sets from Small Bear. Or, I could've lost all that money because they're all crap. Only one way to find out. So I got transistors, I got my DCA 75, so we'll be able to test them right away. No going back now, let's go ahead and crack it open. And check inside here for packing slip. Any private information? Nope, that's good. All right. Got the regulation anti-static Ziploc bag, that's good. out all right well we didn't get pebbles which is good let's go ahead and get a count on the transistors and we'll see how many are here okay so we got one two three four five six seven eight nine five eight so 98 transistors so a good bit more than what I expected, which was like 70. Uh, 98 transistors, and I paid 65 bucks per transistor. That would be 66 cents per transistor. So, not bad. Um, like I said, I try to always get them less than a dollar transistor. All right, so looking at some specifics. So we have the part number that was advertised, which is the 2N169s, and these are in the crimped oval top hat package. By the way, if anyone knows the actual TO designation for these packages, I'd be very interested to hear them. I could not Google it for the life of me. Uh, we also have the round packages here. So these are 2N136s, 2N44s we saw in the picture, 2N135. I'm just gonna shout them out now. You have to take my word for it. Yeah, 2N135, 2N44s, 169s. All right, so it looks like all the transistors that are in the oval package are 169s, and then there's a small variety of part numbers in the rounder package. I see 136s, 2135s, 2N44s. I will separate those into part numbers later. 
Let's go ahead and just test a couple here with the Peak Atlas. All right, we're gonna throw a couple of these in the Peak Atlas DCA 75. Of course, all these have to be tested eventually, but just for the video's sake, we'll have a look. Uh, you'll notice here I'm using pliers to handle the transistors pre-test, and that's because the heat from your hand can warm up the germanium transistor and have a significant impact on your measurements. So you wanna be careful to never touch germanium transistors before or while you're testing them so that your finger heat doesn't throw off the tests. All right, so this came up as a PMP germanium and it is reading HFE 23. This is the 2N44, so that's really low gain. Scrolling down here, leakage of 30 now microamps, so that is also really low leakage. I just wanna make sure, okay, so the pinout is correct, which is good. So on this package, you'll see that there's two leads that are close to each other and then one lead that's sort of separated. The Two leads that are close together. The furthest one to the top is the emitter, and then you have the base, and then at the bottom, the one that's further away, that's the collector. So this one we tested, it has really low gain, 23, but also pretty low leakage. So that's a decent candidate for uh, something in a Darlington pair or a complementary pair. But obviously I wanna see higher gains out of the single transistors here. So let's try one of these 169s and see what we get. All right, so these are coming up no component detected. So that's usually a sign of a bad transistor, but it could also be that the leads are not making good contact. Yep, same thing, no component detected. So that's not a good sign. Uh, that indicates to me that these transistors potentially were removed from some piece of electronics because they were bad. So hopefully that one is just a outlier. Let's try another one of those 169s. Okay, so this one came up, NPN germanium, HFE 116, which is great and leakage of 428 microamps, which is on the high side of acceptable. Um, anything more than that, and I've started to question the longevity of the transistor. However, there are some fuzz pedals that need leakage in order to work correctly. The original um, Maestro fuzz tones, the original tone benders, they need that leakage to bias the transistor on. One thing I'll do is I'll give it another test because what I wanna see is consistent testing or consistent parameters over multiple tests. So we have the same gain, which is good, 116, Leakage of 420 micro microamps, so one change in a uh, one microamp is nothing. Let's throw one more test at it. 116, 428. Okay, so that one's good. Uh, well, if you'll see, sometimes you'll test it and the numbers, your gain and your leakage will just keep increasing and increasing and increasing, and that's just called thermal runaway. That transistor is bad. It's just going to get noisy and sputtery. It's not going to work. So, all right, so we have two transistors. One tested bad and one had decent specs for certain builds. Uh, which is signaling to me that all the transistors have to be tested and their results cataloged to make sure we don't have any duds floating in with good transistors. Let's try another one. This is 2N135. I didn't look up the data sheets on these, even to what configuration they are, but we'll just let the Peak Atlas decide. All right, PMP, low gain, 35, and low leakage. So sort of the same situation as the original transistor we tested. Let's try, yeah, let's try a 136. Cause I think we did a 44 first, right? Yeah, we tried a 2N44 first, then we did the 169s, and this is gonna be one of the 136s. All right, and PMP transistor, low gain still, and leakage of 20 microamps. So, lower gains than I was hoping for on the sort of round top hat transistors, but they're low leakage too, which, it's good because you're gonna use them in a complementary pair. When you pair those together, you multiply the gains by each other and the leakages by each other. So it's important to have low leakage devices for any complementary or Darlington or, or uh, Zikli pairs. Let's throw one more 169 on for good measure. MPN HFE of 112, it's great. And 79 micrograms of leakage. So that's a really good transistor right there as far as measurable specs from the peak. Do another test. 112, HFE is consistent, leakage 79, exact same specs, one more try. Cool, so that's a really good looking transistor right there. Now, just because the specs look good doesn't mean it's gonna sound right in a uh, pedal. It could still be excessively noisy and crackly. Uh, that is the pitfalls of just using germanium. You just don't know until you get them in a pedal. But what we can see here is that there's not a lot of consistency in the quality of the transistors here. So this is where testing them becomes very important and being diligent and making sure you double check your work and all that so that when you get to the step of building a pedal, you're not disappointed.
All right, so hopefully I covered the basics of buying germanium transistors and the associated risks and pitfalls and pluses and minuses, pros and cons of the different ways to buy. Uh, as you can see here with these uh, bulk unsorted used lots, it's a, bit of, it's a bit of everything. You might have some ones that are complete duds. You might have ones that are too low gain or too high leakage and some that are just right. So that's, that's just what you get. You know, if I, even if I end up with just half of these transistors being usable in pedals, that still means that I paid what, like a dollar twenty a transistor, which is still cheaper than buying those new old stock transistors from Small Bear or uh, NTE. However, of course, it could go it could go a lot south from here. I could maybe the transistors maybe there's only like a small handful that work well, or they could all be great. So that's that's the risk. That's the game you play. Ideally, hopefully, what really matters is that you end up with good quality transistors so you can make some really cool pedals. As a follow up to this video, I'm going to pick out a set of these and we're going to build a cool pedal that'll be coming up in a later video. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate you hitting the like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to know when I make a new video. I'm Joe from Great Bench Electronics. Thanks for watching. Oh, by the way, if you are interested, I'm going to uh, separate out the counts and the part numbers and record the gains and leakages for all these into a spreadsheet. If you want to check that out, that'll be in a link in the description. Okay, bye.